Hello everyone. So you might be watching this in the morning or in the evening. Currently for me, the sun has just gone down and I am sitting by the beautiful ocean, which you may be able to hear in the background. I hope you don't mind. I would like to read to you today the latest speech that we received from True Mother and this was given on November 17. It was given at a special meeting for heavenly Korean family-fed leaders hosted by True Parents. And the theme was Victory for Vision 2027 and the successful dedication of the Chon Mong Gung and the Chon Il Sanctum. So this is the theme. And this was given at the Heaven and Earth Chombo Training Center. So this is just from a few days ago, and it's a little long, so I think what I'm going to do is read it, and perhaps if I have some points to add, I will add them along the way to save a little bit of your time. But I would like to, first of all, title this message, and I'm going to title it with a sentence from this speech. So the title of today's message is, In the beginning, I was alone. But now that you are here, I will try to advance in hope. So these are True Mother's words. With your devoted effort and diligent work, you have striven to bear beautiful fruit over the last two days. Seeing your faces, I feel very grateful to you. So I believe that during this time, they had just completed a two-day leadership strategy meeting, the strategy meeting, I believe. It has brought back thoughts of that day six months after True Father's ascension, on which I proclaimed the first year of Chon Il Guk and Foundation Day a day for which I had to prepare alone. The establishment of Chon Il Guk for the first time in history and the construction of Heavenly Parents' substantial temple where Heavenly Parents' dream can be realized on earth ushers in a new era for the Korean Peninsula, the birthplace of True Parents. In passing through truly difficult living circumstances, it is shocking that we did not have the time to prepare for such a historic day. So Mother's referring to Foundation Day. Mother's referring to the proclamation of the first year of Chon Il Guk and Foundation Day. And there was only six months after Father's ascension to when Mother proclaimed that day. And clearly, she is referring to the fact that not enough preparation was done, not enough time was given properly to be able to prepare for that day. Yet, in order to keep my promise to heaven, the truth is that I could not sleep at night. When it comes to Chon Il Guk, it is important to build a country as its pillar, a nation that can represent it. The national bird and the national flower have been established. However, when it comes to the country and the national flag, I'm not sure how it was for all of you, but for me, when I reflect on the past 10 years, in my heart, I felt like I had to find one tiny needle in the midst of a desert sandstorm without being able to open my eyes. So, first of all here, Mother says, yet in order to keep my promise to heaven, my promise. So, Mother is in her own right, divinely prepared and called by God with a very important and unique mission. You can start to consider that with or without the only begotten son's responsibility. Think about this. 
mother speaks with a with an authority that stands centered on God. You know, there's been a lot of talk. Let me just quickly enter into the fray here. This is where the big fight is. You know, there's been a lot of talk about this and that, about the history, about the truth, about what did mother want to say, about what has mother wanted to say for many years, about father's course, mother's course. But one question I want to ask everyone is very simple. Where does mother's authority come from? Does it come from father as a restorational figure or does it come from heavenly parent? Now, even when I have asked those who a little bit struggle with the idea of some of the things that they hear mother saying or something like this, I ask simply this same question. Where does mother's authority come from? From father, so like from God to father and father to mother like, like this, or does mother's authority come from heavenly parent and father's authority come from heavenly parent and then they unite and make the four position foundation. What do you think? The reason I'm pulling that out here is because I feel like mother definitely wants to go forward with hope. But clearly, she is still explaining to us what it feels like to be in the middle of a sandstorm with your eyes closed and you've got to find one needle. And she's not referring to us, we, our struggle as true parents. She's talking about me, I true mother, the only begotten daughter. And it starts with, yet in order to keep my promise to heaven, not our promise and not my promise to father. Of course she made promises to father and of course true parents made promises to heaven. But mother is referring to her promise to heaven and I believe there is significance in that. I believe that from the earliest moments of this woman's memory, she remembers developing a relationship with God and a promise with God and a promise to humanity also that she would bring about some final conclusion of the providence. And you can say again, with or without, think about that, with or without. Can you imagine that? I don't think anybody's even asked this question. What if, you know, father used to ask this question. Father said, if I fail in my responsibility, what will you do? If I fail in my responsibility, what should you do? If I fail in my responsibility, then even you should take full responsibility for uh, everything left undone. So think about that. Father's mind is so deep, like a parental heart. You know, for father to say that, hmm? It's really, I, I believe, Father's mind is wanting us as sons and daughters to stand up straight and stand up and fulfill our responsibility absolutely and even unwaveringly and even if something should happen to true parents, God forbid, but that's what Father's saying. Even if I fail, what will you do? So think about that just for a minute. Now look at Mother through that lens. What would Mother do? If there was some disruption in the plan, if there was some challenge, some problem, is mother the type of person that would give up? Here's what I believe. I believe mother's authority comes from God and I believe, I believe she made a promise from birth and from her earliest conscious moments. I believe that that promise and her understanding of that promise has matured as she has matured, but it is rooted completely in that fundamental pure promise and that has unwavered throughout her life. And that is the promise she is keeping. Not since 1960, not since Father's passing, not since Foundation Day, but from the earliest moments of her memory, that's when I believe the root of her conscious promise exists. And as far as even deeper than that, surely at her birth or even before her birth, as prepared by the three generations and her entire lineage. I'm not sure how it was for all of you, but for me, the last 10 years has been pretty bad, pretty hard. Like trying to find a needle in a sandstorm with my eyes closed. I mean, you can't open your eyes in a sandstorm because 
right? The sand just obliterates your eyeballs. She goes on. When a country was established in history, there were central people and there were those who participated in that. So mothers thinking about nations that rose out through human history and imagining how those nations came to be and imagining that around those kings and queens or whatever was going on, there was, there was a united team. Even if a small team, there was a united team around that leadership that gave birth to the nation. But mother says there were central people who participated in that. But. I cannot say I had such people around me. I endured everything by myself and then proclaimed the first year of Tronal Gut. So mother's talking about the last 10 years and she's also talking right here about that six months right after father passed. Why would she still be talking about this? I don't think mother is someone who just loves to complain and lament and talk about suffering just because, right? Even, this is a woman that doesn't shed a tear lightly. She will not want to expose a tear even to her own children, even to us, even though probably many of us, at least I know us from the West, can relate to that aspect of mother's nature. To see a tear, to see that emotion, kind of helps us feel a little bit closer in a sense because we can imagine, well, mother's having those feelings. But the truth is, is that mother's not just having those feelings that we could relate to, mother's having feelings so much fundamentally deeper than we have ever felt. And even those, how deep and broad and how momentous they are at any given moment, she will not expose even a small percentage of those feelings. And for her to say this, therefore, is not just light. It's education for us. There's meaning in these words for us to understand. Am I going on too long about it? I endured everything by myself, and then I proclaimed the first year of Chonil Guk. Now, imagine if Mother said this the day after Foundation Day. The, the truth of the matter is, Mother couldn't even say this. She's been hinting at this for 10 years. But imagine if she said this sentence 10 years ago. Already, you know, the sand was hitting her face. She, she couldn't open her eyes. This is to say that it was really us. It was us. It was those around her and certainly those closer to her. But we all need to have that sense of responsibility. If not, then why would mother be telling us this? And so anyway, she proclaimed a Chonoguk. She proclaimed a foundation day. And this was a miracle. However, she goes on, a proclamation alone is not enough. Though this never really happened in the past, I know many of you have made personal effort and offered devotion to bring results and contribute towards church development. So Mother's really acknowledging the fact. She knows that, in one sense, she knows everyone's doing their best. And she's greeting these uh, family-fed leaders from Korea in this speech representing all of us. She knows that we have done our best in some sense to help development, right? So from that time and for some years, I have been speaking about a revolution of the culture of heart. This is what we talked about last week. Mother's longing for a revolution of the culture of heart. Again, she's not talking about, she's not even saying, I want to live in the world with the culture of heart. She's still talking about the revolution. It didn't happen yet. It doesn't exist yet. She's talking about proclamation is not enough. Mother really wants substance, brothers and sisters. Can you hear? Substance, right? Standing in the position of going beyond the Old Testament age, the New Testament age, and the completed Testament age, and proclaiming the first year of Chonal Guk was about creating an environment in which people can attend and live with Heavenly Parent. So, mothers created the environment and still creating the environment. The question is, how are we attending? Or are we? Or to what degree? Now, mother reminisces. She's really thinking about the culture of heart and she's reminiscing also on history a little bit here, especially sec uh, the... Uh, New Testament age, and she starts speaking about, you know, songs 
So let's follow her train of thought here. With regard to songs of praise sang in church services, many beautiful hymns were composed in the New Testament age as people waited for Jesus to return as he had promised. Shall we gather at the river is a hymn of faith that was composed during a time of oppression and expresses Christians' resolve even to die as they looked forward to the day when they could once again meet the, the Messiah. So mothers trying to get our minds, trying to help us to reflect on the purity, on the poetry, on the depth of heart that existed there with the longing of in the, in the New Testament age with the Christians who were longing to the degree even willing to die in wait of the day when the Messiah would return. And so out of the, out of the bitter sweetness of that longing, poetry was written. Out of the bitter sweetness of that longing, precious hymns were sung. Out of the bitter sweetness of that longing, beautiful art and architecture was made, trying to echo, trying to mimic, trying to capture the vibration of God's heart. And Mother is talking about this. She wants to see a revolution of the culture of heart, not an Old Testament style or even a New Testament or a completed Testament style, but a Chon Il Guk style, I believe. 2,000 years ago, back then, I believe the Jordan River must have been a great river. I visited in the 70s and even in 1968. During those visits, the Jordan River was more like a brook. It's just a small stream. That's how much it had changed. So looking at such historical facts, I envisioned what life would be like in the future as we attend Heavenly Parent in the Kingdom of Heaven on Earth. So mothers trying to look at what the future would be by analyzing the past and thinking about what we longed for and how much things have changed and, and what, how much must things now change into the future. Where are we going? What would it look like? It's like even mothers trying to imagine what would it look like if we were attending Heavenly Parent in the Kingdom of Heaven on Earth. Now, Mother has a pretty good idea, right? But even God, even Heavenly Parent, even True Parents cannot fully describe to you what the completed ideal creation really looks like because even God hasn't seen it yet. Think about that. If it didn't include our own creative impulse, if it didn't include our own creative heart, if it didn't include our own revolution of the culture of heart, then maybe you could say God knows exactly what it looks like. Maybe even true parents could describe exactly what it looks like. But the fact of the matter is that we belong there and therefore we are needed there as co-creators and therefore our own individual, unique, creative impulse, artistic culture is needed to be a part of that world before we can even see what that world looks like. All of us, black, white, yellow, all of the ethnicities, all of the cultures are merely fractions of what the entire mosaic must look like and how beautiful it must be. And here mother's describing a longing in her own heart, a desire, just an imagination. What will it be? What will it look like? It was with this in mind that I called David Eaton to come to Korea. He was deeply involved in cultural activities at the time, we were conducting the work of God's Global Providence based in the United States. When I encountered the most beautiful masterpieces around the world, many songs express through their lyrics and melodies the feelings or sensations experienced in a particular place. There are, for instance, beautiful songs written about Naples, Italy. Thank you, Mother. Naples, Italy. That's where my Italian ancestors are from. And if you want to know how beautiful Naples is, go there. They say, you, you know, once you visited Naples, you can die. It's like you can't die without seeing Naples. It is absolutely gorgeous. And one of my mother's favorite songs is Santa Lucia. 
You know, this one. That's a little bit wrong. But maybe I'll practice that, right? I'll sing that next time. These songs express the environment and atmosphere to those times, of those times as well. Germany is another example. So Mother Now sings a song. I don't know the melody of this song, but I'll read the song. A Bodhi tree stands by the well in front of the castle gate. Under the shade of that tree, I had a sweet dream. I engraved words of hope on its branches. Tis under the tree that I go in times of happiness and sadness. Tis under the tree that I go. So, it's very simple and very pure. And mothers, I almost feel like mothers just edging us on. She's saying, come on guys, don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Here you've got the only begotten daughter of God, picking out these four lines, five lines of poetry. So simple. It's a tree by a well in front of the castle gate, and this is where this person goes. This is where the person goes and relates in depth with their heart, and they try to etch it onto the tree. It's like just a relationship with the place and describing that place, like here I am by this beautiful ocean, if I sat back and just listened. It's like the salt in the water dancing as it froths white, approaching the sand. What does the ocean make you feel? Maybe the ocean makes you feel there will always be another day to clean, to revive. The tide will rise and the tide will ebb. There's many things that you can enjoy <laughs> in nature, like we were talking last week. So that's why I'm here right now. Mother says, you can feel the atmosphere through the lyrics of this song. Can't you? In this era of Chonil Guk, when we are attending Heavenly Parent and living with true parents, our songs of praise should also change accordingly. So guys, we need to write new songs. If you didn't get the memo. That is why I brought David Eaton here 10 years ago and said to him, please write lyrics and melodies reflecting the atmosphere you are experiencing here. Yet this is not an easy task, it seems. And it's truly not an easy task. So please, if mother sends David Eaton from America, to Korea to write songs and write poetry. Please don't think it's David's job. Please think, ah, oh, David's taping, taking, mother, True Mother is taking this top level guy from the United States. Yes, because he will do some work, but she's also telling all of us, those of you who can meditate on your attendance to Heavenly Parent and True Parents, put some words to it, maybe put some melody to it. And in fact, David every year opens up holy song competitions for exactly that purpose. So David Eaton has been following through on Mother's request. But I think there's more than one instrument in the orchestra. So let us all really be stimulated by Mother's request here. She's been longing for this. Father also. You know, that's why they set up the little angels so many years ago. And now Mother goes on to another song. There is another song I have sung since I was a young girl, but though I am actually a soprano, nowadays my voice is not so good. Mother laughs. In, at this point, mother's laughing at herself because she's kind of saying my voice is getting a little bit less than before. However, I must sing this song to you for the sake of America. Now, this is an American song. Mother sings it. The sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer, the people are gay, which means happy. The corn tops ripe and the meadows in bloom, while the birds make music all the day. The young folks roll on the little cabin floor, all merry, all happy and bright. By and hard times come a knocking at the door, then my old Kentucky home, good night. 
Weep no more, my lady, oh, weep no more today. We will sing one song for my old Kentucky home, for my old Kentucky home far away. So it is sort of a song, a, a little bit of melancholy, uh, remembering my old Kentucky home. And mother says, though it was short, did I sing it all right? Everybody claps. When do you think this song was composed, she asks. This song was composed for the independence of the United States before the Civil War between the North and the South. Christianity began to evangelize the world centered on Europe, yet its fundamental essence is love your neighbor as yourself. It was to do with love. In spite of this, people did numerous things that contradicted this fundamental essence. So think of that, just the simplicity of mother's mind when she's speaking about America and America's responsibility. And of course, it's rooted in Europe. Speaking about the expansion of Christianity, speaking about the responsibility of Europe. And so Christianity began to evangelize the world centered on Europe. The essence of Christianity is love your neighbor as yourself. And Mother's question to us all is, so, is that how we evangelized? Is that how Christianity expanded around the world? Have we, have, have we Christians left footprints around the world of loving others as we love ourselves? As is the case in Africa, when you look at the original roads that were built in Africa, all of them go from the resources to the ports. There's no infrastructure built for the people or internally within the nations. It goes from the mine to the port. It's like straight to, from the gold to the boat. That's the only reason we need the, boat, the road is to take. So that is not the essence of Jesus. That is not the essence of Christianity. That is absolutely not the essence of living, treating your neighbor as yourself. So you know, you can, you can talk about many, many things about history, and, and most of the time we get caught up in the details. But Mother is like kind of pulling the rug out from everything to say with so simple words, Europe's responsibility, America's responsibility, ultimately Christianity's responsibility, unfulfilled. Unfulfilled because we evangelize Christianity at great expense to others, at great expense. Slaves were sold around the world by Christians that went to Africa. This song about Kentucky is inspired by a scenic farm in the South. There was a black man working on that farm. Although he lived happily, surrounded by nature that he loved, I think it was in this situation that he had to fight for the Confederate Army in the Civil War. This song expresses his longing for the hometown he has left behind. Can you imagine the scene? Okay, so Mother's really getting into the scene here. Like I said, it's kind of a melancholy song. He's remembering his home where he comes from, this old Kentucky home that he's singing for. But it's not really his original, original home. It's a home that he made for himself out of the story of America, which included taking human beings from the continent of Africa to enslave them and work them on farms and in construction in America. And Mother's asking us to imagine the scene, imagine the internal mind of this man who is now after America's independence. So we have the independence from Europe, independence from England, we have the American states, but now you have the Civil War looming, which is fundamentally a war that uh, was largely uh, centered around the Emancipation Act. So uh, Lincoln wanted to end, abolish slavery. And I think at the time there were still so many people, uh, especially in the South, that didn't agree, although in the North many people did agree, and many people risked their lives to help uh, slaves escape. But civil war ultimately took place, and imagine being a uh, black man 
in the South fighting for the Confederate Army in the Civil War and just honestly longing to go back to the last chapter when things were more simple, you know? It's not asking for a lot, right? It's not asking to be taken back to Africa, not asking to be given paid reparations, not asking to be given much more than just, can I, you know, maybe, maybe that's, I'd like you to pray on what you think was in his mind, but it's a really uh, beautiful heart that mother has to think about this and ask us to pray on that. And so the United States was born as a new Christian nation, a liberal democracy, and moreover emerged as a representative liberal democratic nation during World War II, key point in human history. So, if the United States, if the United States had known the heavenly providence correctly back then, the division between North and South Korea would not have occurred. But now, on the Korean Peninsula, through true parents, we will have a temple wherein we can attend heavenly parents substantially on this earth. This is a miracle of history. It's a miracle I had never once dreamed of. Do you feel it, Mother says? Do you feel it? So, mixed behind all of this is Mother's deep desire to see this new culture, and I feel her blood, sweat, and tears, and heart, and hope is being poured into every brick, every tile, every marble pillar of this Chonwongung, of this Chonil Sanctum, this incredibly heavenly temple. This people, which has to fulfill the mission and responsibility of heavenly parents' homeland, must unite, so north and south. In order to do that, it is urgent that all of you who received the blessing first become one and realize a heavenly unified Korea. But we can't do this alone. The environment around us has to unite around us and help us. So this is where we come in, the rest of the world comes in, so listen. The United States is positioned to have the greatest influence. But Christianity in America, especially those in positions of political power, have a Christian background. But there is a problem of white supremacism. This is not Jesus' original nature. He told people to love their neighbors as themselves. However, the forces on the side of Satan have been striving for a very long time to occupy Africa. America is sleeping, however. Yet, the Africans came as slaves and have many and many lived in the United States and they suffered a lot under various types of white supremacism. To put it another way, in order for the democratic world to win over the communist world, the United States must become one with Africa. America must become one with Asia. From this standpoint, the presidents who will lead the United States in the future must know for sure. What is America's mission? America cannot just be for Americans. True parents are the ones that can educate them about that. There is only one set of true parents, the true parents. You must teach so that the United States can become one with the mother of peace, so that America can embrace, America can embrace Africa and embrace Asia and the rest of the world. To that end, there are many beautiful concepts in these songs of praise, in the hymns of the New Testament era, as well as marching songs. There are many famous songs, which is the reason for creating a cultural center in this era of Chonilguk. Since we have to create the culture of Chonilguk, even if you do not have any professional knowledge, you are all waiting for the day when you will be able to dedicate your life to the present moment in oneness with true parents and moreover, the temple where you can directly attend heavenly parent. I hope that through your devotion and effort, many treasures will emerge that can be praised in song in front of God. In the beginning, I was alone. But now that you are here, I will try 
to advance in hope. I believe Mother wants us to understand the deep heart and struggle and even poetry of history and she wants us to stand beside her as her children, as one family, united, no doubt, no wavering, no disunity, total unity as one. Even though we might trip and stumble and fall, we get up and we keep on going with hope despite the challenges, with hope despite the history that may be trying to pull us back, with hope together, as one together, together with True Mother, with Heavenly Parent. Let's get excited about the Chon Wang Gung. Let's get excited about the Chonil, the, the Heavenly Sanctum. Let's get excited to bring our offering for the Chon Wang Gung. Let us bring our donation for the Chon Wang Gung as much as we can possibly bring to the table, let us do, so that our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and on and on, will be truly proud that we did not sleep in this hour, that we did not sleep, but we stood up in this hour, that we embraced our true parents, that we deeply reflected on the internal heart and mind of our true mother, who till this day is still reminding us of how we were sleeping in the past, reminding us of how we've been, you know, throwing sand in her face in the past. But now we are with you, mother. Now we are with you, so yes, have hope, and yes, we can have hope too. Brothers and sisters, let us go forward, marching as one, and if we can write some songs along the way, let's do it. Let them be sincere, let them be based on substance, let them be based on the true simplicity of the life that we are living. History is complicated, but I believe humankind in the future, our experience with Heavenly Parent in the future will be one much more beautiful, much more simple, much more intoxicatingly artistic than you can possibly imagine. Let us experience it. Let us discover it together. In the meantime, I hope you could enjoy True Mother's words today, and I hope I could add some extra color for you, and I hope especially you could enjoy the sweet, calming sound of the sea in the distance. Until next time, God bless you.